Hello guys, my name is Juan Cediel, owner of Goalie Masters and goalkeeper coach at Mackey. And this is the Mass Football Podcast. Welcome back to the Mass Football Podcast, the number one soccer podcast here in Oklahoma City. I am your host, Ricardo Joan, and I am here at Legacy Real Estate Group. Shout out to the sponsors for allowing me to use this nice studio. Like I say, if you're looking to buy, sell, invest in a house, Legacy Real Estate Group is the way to go. Uh, but I'm not here by myself because I am here with a special guest. He played at MacU, is now the owner of Goalie Masters. Goalie Masters. Mi amigo Juan Sevier. There you go. That yeah. sounds perfect. <laughs> How are you today, my friend? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Thanks for having me here. I'm really excited about our conversations. Nice, nice. Y lo podemos entender en español si quieres. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We doesn't matter. Here or... English or Spanish. Yeah, well, first, English. cheers, my friend. Cheers. To a good <laughs> podcast. To a good podcast. Um, for the people that don't know you, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah, definitely. So, okay, as you said, Juan Sayel, um, I was born and raised in Colombia. Nice. So all my life I've been living in Colombia. Six years ago, I came to America. My first year, I did an English course, mm. and then I actually transferred to a junior college. And then I ended up with MACU. So I played two years in a junior college, and then I played two years here at MACU. Now, I have been coaching for two years already. So those are my six years here in America. Uh, play as a goalkeeper all my life. I have been with soccer all my life. And that's pretty much me right yeah. now. We don't know anything else but soccer, right? Yeah, everything is soccer. You know, when, when you come from South America, when you come especially from Colombia, that's the topic, the main topic, yeah. the main sports. Es el número uno en Colombia en fútbol. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy, like something that is like a big cultural change, like how everyone plays different sports here. Mm. And then in Colombia, you just play one sport and you stick to the sport the whole you, time. I guess that's a good thing, right? That everybody plays something different. Yeah. As opposed to everybody just playing one sport, you know. I mean, Colombia is really good at soccer, mm -hmm. but we're not that great. Well, we're all right. right? <laughs> we're there. We're there. Yeah. So you're trying to tell me that you've only been speaking English for five, six years? No, 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 no. I started going to a bilingual school in Colombia. Okay. But then, like, it was a really good school, actually. Uh, and I got, like, the basics from it. But then I changed my school and the English wasn't the greatest. Mm -hmm. And then I finished my last years in... Uh, in a school that will teach English as well, but it wasn't the greatest year. Mm -hmm. Then I came here, like, like I told you, I went to Florida. Mm -hmm. Is that where you played your junior? No, no, no. In Florida, it was just an English course. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. of course, since it's Florida, you end up talking more Spanish oh, than yeah, English. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I believe like I got better with my English was when I went to Texas and mm -hmm. right now in Oklahoma, where it kind of demands you more to speak the language, you know? Is Oklahoma home for you now, or it's basically? Yeah, I really, I really like Oklahoma. I mean, I'm still. Sometimes I have my days where I'm like, oh, of this course. wind. <laughs> I hate the wind, but I mean, other than that, I love Oklahoma. I love the people of Oklahoma, and it's uh -huh. such an amazing place to be. I believe so, and it has so much potential as well, yes. and so much growth. So. It's coming up, isn't it? Yeah, I was having, like I said, this conversation with somebody else in. The Oklahoma City soccer community benefits a lot from the foreigners that come in mm -hmm. and end up deciding to stay. It does so much for the community here. And for a person like you who started Goalkeeper Masters, um, that's only going to benefit everybody else. Can you elaborate a little bit about why you started Goalie Masters and what that is for you? Yeah, definitely. So everything started like two years ago, when I, like I told you. Um, I finished my undergraduate and then I was like, okay, what I'm going to do now? Or like, I'm done with soccer, I'm done playing, what, what is my next step? And then, like, it was summer, I believe so, and then I was like kind of bored or looking things to do. And I was like, you know what, it will be like nice to create something regarding goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. And everything started with the idea of like, I want the goalkeeper university, like the goalkeepers that play in university to be recognized. Because sometimes we like, it's the one that gets least recognized. Yeah, definitely. And not only that, but like, especially like just goalkeeper university, like the, the Trainers, ones that... personal trainings and all stuff that. Stuff like that. Just like, hold on. <laughs> so at the beginning was just about like me wanting to focus on 
goalkeepers that play in different colleges. So it wasn't about me or it wasn't about training or stuff like that. It was just about like, oh, this guy plays in this college. Oh. Here is his highlights. Get to know him and stuff like that, like yeah. showing their yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah. And then it started like that, like trying to explain people how the college experience is or like how is the leagues divided or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I wasn't as consistent and like I, I didn't follow through it. And then I, I like I said, I start training with Mike you as a goalkeeper coach and I start recording the sessions and stuff like that. And then I start like putting them online or stuff like that. And I start like liking it more on the way of like, yeah, I think this is more of my goal and this is more of my purpose. So then I decided to focus more on like, okay, goalkeeper trainings, goalkeeper practice. How mm -hmm. can we help the goalkeeper community to grow? Because mm -hmm. I believe goalkeepers, especially like, it's such a small niche. And mm -hmm. like, as you said, they are so underrated. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah, so they're so important, yeah. <laughs> right? Like if a goalkeeper does great, pues, a veces they don't give them the highlight that they need. If a team wins, they're not thinking about the goalie. But when they lose, it's sometimes the goalie's fault, you yeah. know? But a goalie could say, hey, like, if we scored more goals, we wouldn't have this problem too. So it's, it's that difficult. Yeah, it's a really tough position, honestly. Um, I mean, it's funny because, like, we have the worker, right? Mm -hmm. Where, like, goalkeeper, like, Biwu, he makes an amazing save. And everyone's like, oh, that's crazy. But that's it. That's it. <laughs> it yeah, dies, yeah, you yeah. know? Like, then they don't care anymore about him or stuff like that. Or just they don't realize how much importance mm -hmm. the goalkeeper has. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder why people want to be goalies to begin with, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need to be crazy to be a goalkeeper starting from there. Why did you want to be a goalie? Uh, I didn't like to run. You didn't like to run? <laughs> no, That's I'm a good kidding. excuse. I'm I mean, just honestly. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I started really young. Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. Like, when did I say, like, oh, I want to be a goalkeeper? But since I was in school, I was playing as a goalkeeper, playing as a goalkeeper, playing, playing, playing. And, like, I was good, so yeah. everyone was like, okay, you can continue to play as a goalkeeper. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and then, that's it, like, I, I think in, in the school, like, I used to build relationship with old people like that, mm -hmm. because they would like me to play with them, so, yeah. stuff like that, so I just continue playing as a goalkeeper. That's funny, because if you're a good goalkeeper, and then you build those relationships, that's probably one of the positions that everyone's like, all right, we got a team, but we don't have a goalie. Yeah. I know somebody. I know somebody. Uh -huh. And then you get called up. So you always get invited. That's the good thing. Yeah, that is the good thing. It, talk to me about how you started playing in Colombia. How was that soccer there? And then try to roll into how you ended up in Oklahoma. Why did you decide to study abroad and pursue goalie as opposed to just staying and playing in Colombia? Sure. So... Okay, uh, like I mentioned, I started in Colombia in high, in a school, so since I was a kid. Where at? What part of Colombia? Bogota. Bogota, okay. Yeah, is that's the capital. Okay. And then I was playing in the school just for fun, on recess, stuff like that. But, like, I never got, like, a proper training or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I kept playing until, like, seventh grade, where I actually told my dad, like, hey, dad, I would like to go to an academy mm -hmm. or play something more serious. So he actually took me to La Equidad Seguros, that's a professional team over there, and they have their own academy. Okay. So I went there, made the trials, and they were happy with me, I stick with them. <laughs> and then I have a fun story about it, because like I told you, I never practice with a goalkeeper Fishing. coach or stuff like that. So I remember I show up like to the academy practice with the goalkeeper coach, with everyone wow. with the uniforms, everything. Must so have nice. Shock, huh? yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. And then we started doing the drills. <laughs> and the first drill, I didn't have the technique or uh -huh. stuff like that. I was just a goalkeeper. I know how to make the saves. I don't know the technique. And I remember the guy throws me the ball and I do my technique. Uh -huh. Then the guy just laughed. And he's like, go uh -huh. and I start practicing yeah. by yourself. Like in the meanwhile, they were doing their stuff. I was just diving by wow. myself. Like he was so like, yeah, I know. But honestly, it was a great experience. I was with like, yeah, for a couple of years. We won good things. Uh -huh. It was good. And then on December, I broke my tibia. On a, tibia? Yeah. It was the dumbest injury in the world. So <laughs> it's funny because I got injured uh -huh. on the game. Like What happened? How? Uh, I stepped wrong. Uh -huh. So the field in Colombia, they're not as good as here. It's like Western or worse? Yeah, it's like Western. <laughs> okay. Exactly. It's like yes, Western. Western, Western is Colombia. Colombia. I know. Got you. <laughs> yeah. And then I stepped wrong. I stepped like in a hole. Uh, mm. Yeah, people were like, oh, you just sprained it. 
and I continue playing like for five minutes and then I was like yeah I cannot play it anymore it hurts really bad so everyone was like oh you're just being lazy mm -hmm. I was like no so we ended up going to the doctors and they were like yeah you just broke your tibia so I actually got a surgery so that was like on December I broke my tibia and then during that period, came to America to visit my uncle. He lives in Florida. That's okay. the reason why I went for an okay. English course in Florida. And during that vacation, I was like, oh, it would be really nice if I can actually get, like, playing soccer here in America and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it started getting in my mind, like, it would be nice to get. And at that moment, there was a team called FC Florida. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Uh, actually... John Texter, I don't know if you have heard about it. Mm -mm. He used to own it. Okay. Right now, John Texter is like owner of a team in Brazil and oh, yeah. part of, I forgot the name, but it's a team from the Premier League. Oh, wow. I think so. Anyways, so FC Florida was bringing players from internet abroad, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, oh, it will be so nice if you can actually like connect with them mm -hmm. because my cousin, she used to play soccer as well. <laughs> And uh, she was on the academy of FC Florida, but not on the big team. Not you know? the first the team. One, the yeah. one that was bringing people. Si, si. So one day I was playing, so I got injured. I was kind of playing around, getting better, Coming you know. back. And then my uncle loves soccer as well, uh -huh. Colombian. Um, we go to play indoor soccer. Uh -huh. And it was raining outside, so FC Florida, the good team, was What's practicing there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Things crazy. of life, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I introduced myself to a coach, whatever, and he said, like, no, just come next week and we can, we can see you or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I went, show up, we start practicing. And you showed like, up this one with the proper technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what to do. After five yeah. years, I can finally do it. <laughs> and then, yeah, the guy was like, oh, it'll be really nice if you can actually come to America, you can train with us, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. he was like, okay, amazing. So I came back to Col I went back to Colombia. Uh, I stopped playing with like yeah, they found another goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was injured, and then I started practicing with Independiente Santa Fe. Okay, that's also like a big professional team, and they have like a good academy as well. In Florida or is this no 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 that's in Colombia. So I, that's like January. Okay. I come back from coming from vacation. I go to back to Colombia. I start training with mm -hmm. Santa Fe. Um, I wasn't like really, really, really official on the team, on the roster, because I was just going to stick for four months. Mm -hmm. But I used to, I train with them every day and stuff like that. I get good contacts. And then I get in shape and ready to come here to America and start training with FC Florida. So that's where I start like my English course. And then I start as well training with FC Florida. Mm. That took a year. FC Florida actually did really well. We ended up being one in the nation. Wow. We had amazing players as you said like, mm -hmm. we were like a club that we used to travel all over mm -hmm. amazing really grateful about Texter John Texter he did a lot for us and then after that year I got a scholarship on Ranger College mm -hmm. Ranger is located like two hours from Dallas okay two hours west from Dallas it's such a small town it's <laughs> Texas yeah yeah it's Texas such a small town like they only have the college honestly mm. they didn't even have like a McDonald's wow and the closest Walmart was like 10 minutes Hijo. yeah it was crazy but a great experience mm -hmm. amazing people stuff like that so I went there for two years uh, our team did really well as well mm -hmm. and then ended transferring to MacQ for the last two years of my why, undergraduate why MacQ? why MacQ? Well, how'd you get recruited? Like, of all places, Macu. Yeah, I mean, Macu was one of the first ones that I heard, so it was kind of funny because, like, I finished my season, and of course, you get like that anxiety of locate okay, one mm -hmm. next, especially from a junior college, especially as international. Like, oh, we depends on scholarships mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So Dustin is the one that calls me, mm -hmm. and we start talking with Dustin, great guy, and great cell person. <laughs> he got you. So, yeah, he got me. He was like. You know, like, here's Mike, you have this, you have all these opportunities for scholarships, really good scholarships. And then he's like, okay, can you give me an answer tomorrow? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what do you mean? I need to talk with all my family, yeah. like, and stuff like that. They were like, okay, you tell me tomorrow, I'm finding another person. I'm like, okay. So we end up thinking, I was like, ah, give me a week. Okay. Then end up thinking about it. And, end up coming to Mike. Dang, and the rest is history, huh? Yeah. Nice. I went to Mike, but I only played there two years. Mm -hmm. And it's just, 
I always like getting that story out of internationals. It's like, out of all places in the world, how did you end up at Mid-America Christian University? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it sounds like it went great. You played there for two years. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I'll let you tell me because, yeah. So, yeah, I went two years when Mitch started. Mm -hmm. Mitch, that was Mitch's Danny. first year? Yeah, that was ah. the first year with Mitch, Danny, James, and Dustin, the four of us. I was goalkeeper with Austin mm -hmm. Parker, mm -hmm. great guy. And then that was the first year we won the Christian national tournament. Mm -hmm. And then second year is Danny's first year as a head. No, yeah, probably. I don't know. I, I believe so. Was it? It was a good year too, though. That's what I know. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, so. Um, no, 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 actually, it was the second. Because I think Mitch might have done two. Yeah, Mitch did two, I think so. And yeah, then yeah. Danny took over. After yeah, that. yeah, you're right, you're right. And then I think Danny did two. Too. As a coach, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he's over there in, was it Michigan? Yeah, uh, Missouri. Missouri State. Yes. That's where he had played too. Yeah, he played it's there. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then now you're doing the goalkeeper master. And then I'm doing the goalkeeper master, slowing it. Like I did find my passion about it. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because I finished, like I told you, I finished my undergraduate and then I was like, what with my life? Talk about that anxiety again, huh? Yeah, you again, it's the same thing. Know? Like, okay, what about my visa? What about. Like, I have yeah. been building a life here. I have already been for five years in America. Going back to Colombia, it's like... Oh, it's gonna be yeah, definitely. I mean, Colombia, I'm not saying bad about Colombia. Colombia is a great place, but like... All the, the yeah, mm -hmm. all the opportunities that you have here in America are not compared to Colombia. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go to vacations for Colombia, great place. One Best day, place one day. Yeah. I saw my bucket list. So I was like, I want to go to Colombia one day. Yeah, you should. You should. It's amazing. So yeah, I finish, and then um, I got an offer as a GA position at uh, Student Life. It's not even related with soccer. Mm -hmm. It's a Student Life with Matthew, with Blake and all like the faculty staff members. And it was a great, great opportunity. I also had another offer, but then I ended up deciding the one for Matthew. Mm -hmm. And then speaking with Danny, we were like, okay, you can be a goalkeeper coach on Matthew. Mm -hmm. That way you can still be related with soccer. Mm -hmm. and because like, like, like we said, like, Soccer has been our blood all our lives, mm -hmm. and just stopping doing it is just like, it's yeah. really tough. It's a piece of you. Yeah, it's a piece of me at this point. And then, again, um, I told I tell Danny, okay, I'm going to be able to help and stuff like that, and I started loving it. So mm -hmm. He gave me an opportunity, and now you're just really grateful yeah. about it. You, you held on to it, and now you're now look at you, right? Yeah, like, I do, like whenever you find that purpose, and whenever you find that idea of like, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is what I'm passionate about it, Everything starts flowing. Mm -hmm. Everything starts coming. Everything. It's easier to wake up and be like, I want to do this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the beauty. It also reminds me of like how opportunities, certain opportunities come to you. And when they come to you, you have to take them because they may never come back again. That's right? True. Like, yeah. There's probably been situations in your life where like something gets offered and you're just like, man, that sounds great. But should I leave Colombia or not? <laughs> ah, man, I have it so good here. Should I leave or not? Yeah. And then, like, let's say you didn't leave, you might not get that opportunity to go back again. Like, yeah. hey, you want to be an assistant goalie keeper, trainer? Should I or should I not? You might not ever get that position again. So it's like, that's kind of how a lot of things I've noticed in my life is like, just go. Just do yeah, it. Yeah, just, just take it. it. Just take it, it, it and then you'll figure out somehow. Mm -hmm. It's funny because, like, I mean, now that you mentioned, it kind of reminds me one, like, before I used to, before I was going to come here, I got an offer from a Colombian team to play professional. But then I was like, but America, I didn't have like that much, I don't know, like I wouldn't have done it like that big as a professional. Mm. And then I was like, no, nah, I need to go. Like this is tentative, but my idea is United States, you know, focus yeah. on United States, take that. I don't know how we'll do it. I don't know if I will get a college, but let's try it. Nice, dude. Well, I commend you for that because it seems like you're, you're on it. I was checking out the uh, Instagram page and what is it like almost up to 3,000. Any video you put up gets a couple thousand views too. <laughs> yeah. So you're on the right track. So I mean, that's that's. Are you doing personal trainings too, or how is that looking? Yeah, uh, I'm doing my personal training, little kids. I'm also helping with sporting. Mm. I'm also helping with Oklahoma ODP. Mm. So we have like three teams under the nice, nice. But I mean, honestly, it has been tough. Like right now, Goldie Master is the one that is growing a little bit now. Si, si. It's just about being consistent. Being um, consistent. Like yeah. That. And then there was a, what is it, the next goalie, what was it, that camp that came? Oh, the camp, yeah. So Diego Restrepo is mm -hmm. the um, goalkeeper coach at DC United. Mm. He came here, he wants to do like the camp here, 
So it's funny because like if I wouldn't have like all this Instagram stuff, like who wouldn't even know about me or yeah. stuff like that. So they reached me out and then they mentioned like, hey, will you be interested in doing this? I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 it's a yeah. great opportunity. So they come, great come, great, great people as well. Yeah, I noticed that's kind of like some, almost something similar to what Goalkeeper Masters is as well, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of runs the same. I, I kind of had seen his and yours and I was like, that's what his could turn into if, yeah. if you keep it up. That's, right. that's one of my biggest goals, like having like an actual facility having an actual academy mm. like you said like next action is the same thing like they have camps going all over the world but they also have like their own they facility and their own place and it's really recognized in austin i believe so really yeah have something here in oklahoma yeah that'll be amazing i mean that. yeah i know i mean like i said like oklahoma has a lot of potential like mm -hmm. soccer is growing a lot everyone is investing more like mm -hmm. that that'll be my dream mm. I think Stress you can do it, man. You just got to keep, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. going, keep consistent, and keep trusting the process, I believe. so. Trusting the process. Yeah. And I had also seen you dabble into the podcast as well. Did you stop or are you still putting out episodes? Because I was listening. Yeah. I was listening. I had heard, what is it, the first three, four? Uh -huh. Are you still putting them out or? Well, so? No, that, that's my goal. I, have been, I, have, mm -hmm. I haven't been that consistent <laughs> talking about consistently. But yeah, I mean, the idea is to continue, continue, continue. And again, like my biggest goal is just like to actually help goalkeepers to grow, yeah. goalkeepers to learn about the position, sh tell my story and stuff like that, or allow people to tell their stories to the goalkeepers so mm -hmm. everyone can get knowledge of it. I said this on the last episode that came out today, and I say it a lot because it's one of my favorite saying is to be the adult you wish you had when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the goalie trainer that you wish you would have had when you were a kid. Yeah. You're going to have a kid who's going to come for his first professional goalie trainer you're going to throw a ball at him and you're going to see his technique and you're probably not going to laugh at him. Yeah. You're probably not going to send him to go train by himself. You're going to teach him the way that you wish you would have been taught, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so now, give me a little bit about... Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Yeah, please. I played goalie. Okay, um, really? When I was in middle school mm -hmm. because my dad was a goalie. Okay. Mi papá jugaba delantero ya cuando, pues, when he wasn't as fast as he used to be and when he wasn't <laughs> getting the ball and when he wasn't getting his playing time, he transitioned into being a goalie. Uh -huh. And he played down here at Western. And when I was young, well, I guess I only got to see him play as a goalie. Okay. I started playing goalie. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. Yeah. It is hard. Because, I mean, what's the first thing everybody wants to do when they show up to practice? They just want to rip it at the goalie. Yeah. And <laughs> they're not ripping it from, like, far out. They start from, like, right here. Just ripping it in your face. You're just like, <laughs> really, yeah. guys? Like, really, really, really? Mm -hmm. So it you said it really takes a special kind of person to be a goalie and it does it does because it's it's lonely it's hard it's not very forgiving um tell me a little bit about the qualities that a goalie needs to really excel and to be dominant on the field because i've seen you talk about it and i've seen you post about it but i don't think very many people know yeah what special qualities a goalie needs to be great well i also preach that i mean this depends on like the person you ask you know mm -hmm. like you can ask a, a different coach and they might be looking for different things from a goalkeeper but i mean if i want to just conclude everything in a big thing like a goalkeeper needs to be or must be a good leader mm -hmm. so that's just to start like their mentality needs to be right mm -hmm. on that spot and then if we talk like actually characteristics of the goalkeeper then I'll talk like, for example, how they need to be such a big athlete. Like they need to be fit, they need mm -hmm. to be able to dive and they need to be able to perform whatever they need to do. And also I believe this is a big one. Like whenever you're fit, whenever you're like in a good shape or stuff like that, you are also really well mentally as mm -hmm. well. Like you believe in yourself, you, I mean, you, have to. you get more confident, you know, mm -hmm. and a goalkeeper must be a, conf a confident person. And then also entering to more like aspects of the game, uh, I believe like position, like reading the game, being able to know where where he's located and stuff mm -hmm. like that. A uh, famous quote that I once heard was like, "The best goalkeeper never dives." The best goalkeeper never dives. Never dives because I mean, if you think about it, if he's in the right spot, he just need he to just catch, God, it. catch it and that's it. He doesn't need to make the oh fancy save over there, but. Of course, that's unrealistic. Yeah, the primero que se me viene a la mente when you had brought that up is como Gianluigi Buffon. Yeah, Buffon. Yeah, great. Right Buffon, place, right Buffon. time. He might not be as quick as he used to be, but he now knows where to kind of be at the right mm -hmm. time. And that's like a De Gea, another yeah. one that's just, 
It might not be his reaction, but it's more so like just being at the right place at the yeah, right time. When in the right position. If you're in the right position, the goal starts getting so small for the striker. The goalie gets And then small. it's the easy for you. Mm. And the last one, I mean, nowadays, 2023, a distribution. Mm. Like a goalkeeper needs to be another field player. Like big cultural shock. Colombia, I didn't used to practice like that. Like mm. never give the ball to a goalkeeper mm-hmm. mentality in Colombia when I was 14, 15. So I came to America when I was 15, by the way. Okay. Yeah. So when I was like those ages and then I came here and then, for example, with the methodology of Mitch and stuff like that, like always to the goalkeeper, like yeah, we're going to yeah, start yeah. building up. I'm like, oh my days. You're like, the first attacker. Huh? You're yeah, the first definitely. Attacker. Yeah. And then my touch is like, oops. You yeah. know, under pressure and stuff like Has that. Has it happened to you before? Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, so something that I needed to improve and something that I needed to accommodate as well. But for example, you see nowadays Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremy is the one that plays there now? Yeah, he's playing at Mike Arena. And he's from? From French. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, French. yeah. Yeah, amazing. Like, the guy can, Basicas de Monaco or algo Yeah, yeah he, he used to play in Monaco. It's, it's funny because he gave, he gave me a shirt. And it's like the Monaco shirt. Really? And so I'm like, wow, dude, this, this is amazing. Official, right? like, hey, yeah, it's the one. official shirt. You know? And it's just like, ah, it's, I, know. So I got many of those in the closet. I know, it was like that. And they get them for free. But that's if you want it, you need to pay like a hundred bucks yeah, for a Monaco yeah, yeah, shirt. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like he he can easily play outside in the field. Mm. That crazy. Or like his talent with his feet. Crazy. We need to have a panel where we can have you, him, and maybe like another goalie, like a Lorendi or a Le- uh, just because it's it'll be interesting to hear how your experience to how his experience to how other people's experience because like you said there's not very many people that well there probably are we just don't know about them that focus and specializes in just goalies mm-hmm. considering it's just a, such an important position on the field yeah. I remember when I used to play club the goalie would just train with everybody else yeah no special goalie training not here here's a goalie coach just for you no no it's just the coach, the assistant coach, he, the 16 players that are out there. And yeah. when does the goalie trainer get his... When does the goalie get his training? If he's not doing it at home, he's not getting it at practice, well, he's probably not getting any at all. Well, I, I tell the guys at Mikey, like, I didn't have a goalkeeper trainer hmm. during all my college years, like four years. I mean, I did have sometimes in my last year, Randall. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, it wasn't... It was me by myself. And then mm-hmm. I was like, I wish I had that because definitely I could have improved way more mm-hmm. through those years of, like, you getting developed, you know? Mm-hmm. Especially at 17 that you're more mindful about soccer and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it was, like, all by my own. Mm-hmm. Same as, like, at the beginning, I was practicing with my dad. And, of mm-hmm. course, my dad would throw me the balls, but he wouldn't teach me how to do it. That way, when mm-hmm. I show up to this goalkeeper mm-hmm. coach, I was like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... That's true, like sometimes, like I said, like they are so underrated that people just forget about them. Yeah. Like, it's like they don't even get jerseys at the same time as the mm-hmm. players. Like, they're just like, <laughs> That's true. Hey, the uniforms are in for all 11, but the goalies is coming in two weeks. Because I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the goalkeepers in two weeks, goalkeepers, you can wear whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah it's yeah, kind of yeah. a sad story. So that's the idea with goalie masters, just give the goalkeepers what I, like, like what said, you wish you what I had. wish I had when I, when I had the opportunity that's what I was going to say listening to what you didn't have probably led you to do this now right to fix that and I think now 2023 there is more emphasis on the goalies now yeah considering it wasn't there before but now yeah, it's, it's getting there it's getting there so and again great opportunities like the work of the shows like oh how important mm-hmm. the goalkeeper it's mm-hmm. just to keep going with that mentality you know? yeah there was a uh, Dibu and then there was the Morocco goalie who also had a great World Cup as well yeah uh, what do you think about the World Cup though crazy I really wanted Argentina to win to Me be too. honest Me I too. didn't really like what Dibu did but I mean, like I said, Dibu, Dibu's Dibu. Yeah, no, yeah. there's every, every goalkeeper has their own word in his mind, so they can do whatever. You have to be a little crazy to be a goalie, but yeah. if you don't really know who Dibu is, then are you really surprised? You know, that's, <laughs> that's part of his character. I yeah, guess, that's know. true. And then, yeah, I like the work. Actually, actually, it's funny because like I used to be the one that complained, like, what are they doing in December and stuff like that. Uh, I honestly, it wasn't right. It didn't feel right to me either. Yeah. I wish it was in the summer, but I mean, what could we do? But it's still like watching and everything like that. I was like, oh, it was actually nice because you were like on vacations so and you had like time free, you mm-hmm. know, and you're with your friends as well. So yeah. like we were at the national tournament watching the teams play, right. laughing about everyone. We were all together. So it was mm-hmm. kind of good, good experience. I good, experience so. good experience. Good yeah. experience. 
Is that was this your best World Cup? Do you think the best one that you've seen, or did the last World Cup do it for you, or the mm. one before that? One World Cup that I remember a lot was the 2020, eh, 2010 World Cup. That's the one that Spain won, right? No, no. yeah, 2010 no, was South Africa. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah think it, it was South Africa. Yes, 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 yes. But is that the one that James played in? And no, that was 2014. Yeah, ah, where he scored okay. such a great goal. Yeah. But 2010, I don't know why I was chilling for. Spain's so bad. Like yeah. Iker, Iker Casillas is my mm, biggest idol. Mm -hmm. I was shooting for and David Villa. I used to like David yeah. Villa so much. I was, then, an, I was a, I'm a Barca guy, so it was uh -huh. the Iniesta de Busquets, the Xavi for me. Oh, big Fernando Torres fan too. Fernando yeah. Torres, como la rompía. Yeah, Fernando Torres too. That was a great World Cup. I love watching the documentary. Uh -huh. and how they talk about the final game when they're playing against Holland mm -hmm. and then it's like yeah he took it down the line se lo pasó Iniesta yeah. se lo pasa de taco Favres Gats gets it flicks it to Iniesta I and know. then it's like yeah, he's on the metal goal de todos <laughs> and Iniesta talks about and there's moments like that in the game has yeah. that ever happened to you where like you get the ball he says like everything just turned quiet and yeah. all you can see is just like that moment of him and the ball. And I'm getting goosebumps just yeah, talking no, about it, right? Started getting and he's just like, the ball is coming and he just can't hear it. And he says the moment he connected with it, he knew it was a goal. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Like, I know. You haven't had a moment like that where it's like a ball comes and it's just like, I'm not going to get there, but I'm going to die. And then you get there and it's just like, yeah, it hits definitely. the pulse and it comes out. And you're just yeah. like, oh. One that I remember was in, my Ranger, in Ranger College. Mm -hmm. It was like first conference game. Mm. And then it is a corner. Uh, our defender sends it out. Then a guy put it in. And then there is like a guy by himself. Mm. And the guy does like a weird trick. I don't know what he does. And then he touches. He put it in the angle. Mm. I dive. I make the save. And everyone was like, wow. And it was like my first experience here in America mm. about like having people watching our games and stuff like that. So I go like all the costumes. I'm like, oh, Talk wow. about it. Like, like <laughs> a boost. You just get up and you're just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was crazy. But yeah, that 2010 World Cup, amazing. Then with the save of Iker Casillas and everything. Yeah, I remember right. that World Cup and it was... Against Robin. Yeah. He had that. Yeah, it's crazy how for soccer just does that. Like, I like talking to people that don't talk about soccer. And I always hear the, ah, 0-0 zero, zero is boring. Ah, 1-0 yeah. is boring. But you, I try to tell them, like, it's not just about the score. It's more so about the little battles that happen on the field. Yeah. The little battles that you don't see. The positioning, the getting the ball... Whether it's una finta aquí, uh, a cut there, cut here. The subtleties in the soccer game are what I appreciate. And yeah. that's what, I guess, the regular common fan doesn't really um, see, I guess. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's always funny to see how people that don't play soccer talk about it. No, and it's, it's crazy. Like you said, like, every, as, every action has so much Impact. going on, like, in the mind of the player, mm. in the mind of, like, mm. everything around it, like. And then you as a goalie seeing everything from the back, communicating to everybody. Hey, mm -hmm. get wide, ball over here, switch it. Like, what kind of goalkeeper are you? Are you yelling at them or is it just you stay a little bit more quiet? Like, how do you... No, I used to be more of talking, mm -hmm. yelling in the games and the practice, not that much. Yeah. But I used to talk a little bit more, stuff like that. Are you different when the game is being played to how you are outside of the field? As a coach? No, no, like as a person. Like... Whenever the whistle blows, do you turn into somebody else, or are you the same Juan? Mm, I think I'll be the same. You think the same? Yeah, I, the same. I'm not the same. <laughs> really? No, I'm nice. I, generally, I, in, in life, I, I feel like I'm a nice person. Okay. Communicate. But once the whistle blows, I feel like I turn into something different. You know, I uh -huh. see, yeah, I, I might be a little bit more fiery. Yeah, you might talk a, little, talk a little more shit than I used to. You know, no me dejo. It's yeah. kind of like it, I turn into something different that I wouldn't normally be doing off the field. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I definitely understand that. But no, I believe no. it would be the same with me. Like, yeah, that shy person as well, like getting scared of making a mistake or something yeah. like that. But just laughing about the game. Like yeah, sometimes yeah. I will get bored. I'll go talk with the center backs yeah. and stuff like that. That's but, funny. Yeah. That's funny. Have you, you went back to Colombia. And then did some training in Colombia as well, mm -hmm. right? Do you think you would ever take goalie masters to Colombia? Maybe a de facto, find a trainer out there to build a brand out there? Like, how's that looking? Or yeah. what's the next step for goalie masters? I mean, of course, we're really small right now. And the idea is, of course, like, keep growing, keep growing, like, thinking ahead, like, a decade or something like that, how big it is. But one of, like, also my biggest dreams 
because I have a lot of dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sleep a lot. <laughs> no, no, you have to. You have to. If you don't dream, you're not yeah, going to go anywhere. It's like goalie masters having a huge impact in South America, specifically mm. in Colombia, specifically goalkeepers. So I would like, I would love if you tell me like, oh, what do you want to do? I would love to be able to make people to have the experience I had. Mm. Even if it is like, if, let's say goalie master grows a lot, has a lot of money, boom, scholarships, mm. bring goalkeepers from Colombia, bring goalkeepers that doesn't have the resources, come to America and have the same experience that I did. I'm mm. really grateful about the experience and I wish more people mm. will be able to do it. So yeah, that, that will be the idea, having like the two places in Colombia here and then see how it goes from there. Mm-hmm. I say that because of the way you brought up goalie masters and how it turned into what it is now reminds me a lot of how we started the football factory okay, and how it, it, it turned into what it is now. Because at first we were doing the trainings but then it turned into more so of like a highlighting other players, highlighting other schools, highlighting, and then we kind of left the training to the side. Mm-hmm. It's funny how a project just turns into something. Definitely. You know, you turn, yeah, yeah. you you start it, and then it kind of just turns into its own thing. But with soccer, I mean, there's so much that can be done. Mm-hmm. So much, so much that can be and done. I believe, like, like you even mentioned it, like sometimes you just need to start, mm-hmm. and then whenever you start, you start like, okay, let's fix this. Okay, this work. Okay, this didn't work, but let's start, continue, continue, and then. If you already have like your goal and what you want to do, then you can start building, shaping, shaping, shaping. Mm. But if you don't know like what you want to do, then it will be really hard. You will start mm. going all over the place and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just finding that accommodation, I believe so. Mm-hmm. You said you're a shy person. You think you're a shy person? <laughs> At the beginning. At the beginning? At the beginning. When people start getting to know me, I can I talk a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Cause a shy per- person wouldn't just make a jump to the U.S. and then just decide to play and, you know, be out there by yourself. I've talked to many foreigners that come and play, and a lot of them are by themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of them come, like I had uh, Steffi Silvera. Yeah. She's from Paraguay. She doesn't, there's, she probably knows like a handful of Paraguayos here. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, that can be hard just to be yeah. out here by yourself. How do you handle that, like not being at home? Or do you have family members here in Oklahoma? No, I don't. Uh, the only family members that I have there in Florida, Florida. Mm-hmm. yeah, I have an aunt, um, an uncle, and an aunt. Mm-hmm. But other than that, all my family is in Colombia. Mm. I, I mean, I think you just just natural selection. Yeah, <laughs> basically, natural whenever selection, you come yeah. here, survival just, of the fittest. Yeah, yeah, you need to live like that. You need to get like, you need to make your friends your family. Mm. You know, you need like in Ranger College was like I said it was a great opportunity because it was just the college mm. so it was just the people from the college so you get to bond a lot have great relationships and then you start like mm-hmm. feeling like home you know same here at Mackey like staying at the dorms you have all your friends you have everyone that you see daily then they make you feel like home that's one thing about Mackey that they're really good at is the, the family there everything is all tight knit I remember when I used to stay at the dorms, mm-hmm. I wasn't really good about making friends outside of the soccer team. Okay. That's probably one of the areas that I should have done a lot better at. But even yeah. with the little friends that I had on the soccer team, it was like just the brotherhood, mm-hmm. you know, just being there every day, whether it's just going to somebody's dorm to play the new FIFA between classes <laughs> or something like yeah, that. It's absolutely. just, it's all, it's all, it's been great. Been great. What year were you at McHugh? 2010. So I went 2010, okay. played 2011 and then yeah, I didn't play anymore. Right. So I still have two years of eligibility. There's still hope, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I have a. You can start working your highlights. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna work on my highlights. <laughs> I have a, a friend, um, an old coach, Neil Stocko, who just took the position at Randall for the men's team. Okay. And I was like, hey, coach, I still got two more years. He's like, what do you think? <laughs> it's funny because I also have years. Yeah. Because of the COVID. Oh, see you then. Yeah, but I mean. I, nah, nah, not okay. Yeah. It's a it's a fun thing to talk about and be like, yeah, what if? But. No, I have two kids, I have a family, and even just to record a podcast has turned into such a scheduling. I know, it takes time. That, that's mm-hmm. why I haven't been able to continue with, the, with my with podcast. The podcast. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, what should I talk about? And then I'm like, oh, I have other things to do. I don't know how you did it, dude. I, before you came, mm-hmm. I put up the camera and started recording something by myself. And I cannot talk by myself in front it's of the hard. camera. It's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I stay quiet for like three minutes. I know. <laughs> and then I'll say this and this, and then I'm like, nah, pues no sale bien, hold on. Yeah. And then I'll say it again, nah. But this, sitting with somebody and just chatting, it's so easy. No, no, it's, so di- easy. it's different. That, that's like another thing that I want to do on the podcast, like talking with goalkeepers, you know, mm-hmm. same thing. And then they sharing their stories mm-hmm. and not me and me. Like, yeah, a goalkeeper needs to be like this or so like that. Because like you said, it's really hard. It is. Um, it's funny because then you're like in the minute eight and you're like, 
Yeah, I feel like I feel <laughs> I sh- like I have done that. Let's, let's restart this. Yeah, and it's like, tough. Oh. It's tough. Yeah. I don't know how. I, the, and the people that end up figuring it out, they it sounds so good, but I guess that's just something I have to. I work know on. it's work. It's a learning process. Everything is a learning process. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. little steps, little steps, and again, keep shaping through the years. Yeah. Well, if there's anything I can help you with the podcast, con confianza, let me know. I would uh, love to help you out and teach you at least how, how it works because I would want to see more. Uh, something about seeing like when i had seen that oh he started a podcast uh-huh. let me go check it out yeah let me go rate it on spotify let me just listen to it and i was like oh they're short digestible episodes i can do that i yeah. like that and it's it makes it easier for me to it made it easier for me to listen to all three of them the first day <laughs> four of them on the first day so thank you definitely i think that's something that you should, should pursue thing. yeah not a lot of people are doing it and i think that's another thing that i like it's like if not very many people are doing it i'm gonna do it too yeah you know that's good but yeah, goalkeepers need it, man. Goalkeepers need it. Are you? Is that all the coaching that you do uh, with those teams, or are you gonna eventually try to go into a club and officially pick up a team, or just no, I mean, specialize in just the goalkeeper? Yeah, no. I mean, I always tell people, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm a goalkeeper coach. I play goalkeeper. Like, I'm not as mindful like as coaching a whole club see, see, see. or I mean a whole team. team. So that's the idea. I continue with with goalkeepers coaching goalkeepers and hopefully one day i'll be able to coach in a mm-hmm. professional level and mm-hmm. then having my own academy that's my biggest goal yeah that's good but you have to specialize because a cook can't drive the bus and the, the bus driver can't drive it can't yeah. cook the food you know what i mean so we all need our specialties for goalkeepers like what's one thing that you want to see change from what you had done before to what it is now like what do you think we should be doing better for goalies I mean, just give them more importance mm. about it. Like, like I said, like I didn't have, and there is now this, there's still a lot of universities that doesn't have a goalkeeper coach mm. or I don't know, clubs that they're like, Oh, the goalkeeper, whatever, you know, stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, give them more importance. And yeah, they need to train because like as a, and I remember this, like as a coach, like how can you demand a goalkeeper to make a save if he's not like actually training about mm. it? You know, like it's not about just throwing the balls and shooting them in the shooting drill. Mm. You need to teach them how to properly do it. How do you want a goalkeeper to go in the game and actually get a cross or stuff mm. like that? Like you need to teach him. There's techniques to it. Yeah, it's not techniques. just basketball, just going up, grabbing it, nothing like yeah. that. Dang. Dang. And also. A big one, and I believe like sometimes a goalkeeper coach should step in and help a lot is regarding the mental aspect. Mm. Not that much about like just, oh, dive, do this and all this, but like it is okay to make a mistake, just continue doing it, continue showing up, continue, keep, keep going. That's next level. Because yeah. we're talking about how goalies don't have trainers. <laughs> and if they don't have training, well, they definitely don't have the <laughs> mental side of it, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know that's true because that's make or break. I think the mental side of it is really more important than what people think not just for the goalies but for everyone on the yeah. field but for the goalies it might be more impactful I know. and here's the thing like if you have a great session during the week guess what on the weekend you'll be confident about it mm. but if your only chance of showing like oh how am i is in a shooting drill of five yards in front of you then you'll be like i suck mm. and then you show up the game and like ah, this is this doesn't work, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, why did you become a goalie then? Like, did your dad play? Like, who played? <laughs> no. Did, did, did anybody play soccer in your house? I mean, they did play soccer. They never played as a goalkeeper. Mm. My brother used to play, like, in high school on the seat. And then my dad used to play, like, with the company and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But he wasn't, like, really into it. Yeah, did you call your attention? Just because of just the friends. Just because you're a rebel? Like, you're yeah. You're just going to block goals? Because there's people that like scoring goals. Yeah. And there's people that like blocking them. Mm-hmm. There's people that get off on being, like... You know, when you, you probably had a game where you've had a guy who's just like, I can't score on this guy. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this yeah, guy? Yeah, like, yeah. he's just blocking everything. And the goalie hears that and he's just like, yeah, that feels yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- this is the funny part. Like, in an um, indoor, so- indoor like, facility, like 5v5. Yeah, my dad hates, hated playing in No, I hated playing as a goalkeeper, but if I play, like, people will complain about me mm-hmm. being good because I think, like, one of my biggest characteristics is the reflexes. Mm. Like, I wasn't the best goalkeeper out there but like in the line in the area that's your special that was my thing you know mm-hmm. like i'll pull up good save of just reflex stuff like that so indoor is what's like 
wow, this is really good. Uh -huh. But then I'm like, I hate playing indoor. It's terrible. And, I, wa and I want to be a guy that wants to score the big glass over there with some mags. Yeah. There, but never happens. <laughs> That's because I don't think people understand. I used to hear my dad complain about it all the time. He went to go play indoor once or twice and he said, never again. <laughs> and I'm like, Papa, por qué? I'm like, why not? And he's yeah. like, because one, they're ripping it at you they, from like right here. You're yeah. three feet away from me. And as a goalie, they're ripping it as hard as they can. They don't, they don't care. They don't care about you. <laughs> they don't care about nothing. There's a glass wall behind no, them. So if they the miss, yeah, yeah. they don't have to walk for it. They're just <laughs> con todo. And as a goalie, your job is to block it. And you, let's say you don't have reflexes. I'm just going to put myself in front of the ball. <laughs> and con todo, no, 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 no. My dad was just like, no, nah, that's not for me. And that's so true. That's so true. They're just ripping it from 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 wherever. Indoor is hard. <laughs> and, and here is a little bit different because, like you said, like here they have the wall behind. Uh -huh. So whatever hits over there, then the rebound is there and they blaster again. In Colombia, at least the ball goes out on the seat, you know. Yeah, yeah right. So, it's gone. You have to yeah. like le piensas. Like I'm not gonna rip it because if I miss it, it's yeah, it but over. But here, this, yeah, this stuff is tough to play. Yeah. I don't really like it that much. That's the goal. That's the the bad side about being a goalie as well. But like the mental side of it is so huge too because there's only one goalie that can be on the field at one time mm -hmm. for a team. Yeah. And for some players to be the second string, third string, like and not see the field but like maybe once yeah. a season. Or you have to wait until somebody gets injured and then, then you get your shot and then you get your shot midway through the season not having played one single yeah. game. So what's your mental side look like? No, yeah. and then... There is the other thing, like you as a goalkeeper coach, you need to be able to control that small world mm -hmm. of three goalkeepers fighting for a position that you probably won't play, but you don't want to them to be like, oh, whatever, he's going to play what I'm going to be practicing is strong, side, you know, yeah. then you need to keep pushing the third goalkeeper. So that way the third goalkeeper is actually thinking like, okay, one day I can have my chance. I can improve and I can make the first goalkeeper better because mm -hmm. I'm getting better besides having like, oh, he's the one going to play what I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. So it's like a whole different world as a goalkeeper. That many people don't, I don't think talk about. You know what I mean? Like, sure, you might be a, a, a midfielder, right? Yeah. If you're, if the goalie, if the coach needs a defender and he likes you, he'll put you in a defense. You can mm -hmm. do that. But as a goalie, pues, unless you're like Jorge Campos and yeah, you need somebody to score Origuito. goals, yeah, yeah, somebody, you know. But that's the really, really hard side of it. I think for a goalie, they have the hardest time yeah, mentally uh, on the for the game. Mm -hmm. period like and that's it and it reminds me like what other goalies like what other goalies are there the hockey goalies uh what other goalies i'm blanking but it's not easy yeah. not easy not easy not easy what's one of the things that being a goalie has taught you that you kind of take with you outside of the soccer world controlling the pressure i think so hmm. or like understanding that you have like mistakes and that life's continuing you know yeah. like I, during the game, I was like, oh, I made this mistake, and that's it, the war was over to me, but then I'm still alive, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, whatever it happened, we probably lost, we died, whatever, but life continued. Mm. So, and, of course, the one under pressure as well, I think that's a big one, because, again, you are every time constantly playing with your hands or playing with mm -hmm. your mind about, like, you're going to make a mistake, you're going to make a mistake, you're going to make a mistake, you know. Mm, so what if you make a mistake? What if your team will start losing once you're... What if they tie you right now? So As opposed to being like, I'm going to block this. Yeah. They're not going to score next day. Yeah. Nothing's going to yeah, pass. That's, that's the two different like thoughts that sometimes a goalkeeper can have. So, mm -hmm. for example, in a 1v1, there is the goalkeeper that will think like, oh, he's going to score on me. And then there's the goalkeeper, oh, I'm making it hard mm -hmm. on the striker to score on me. So, that's... And it has such an impact because if you go out there, let's say on a one-on-one -on -one at the indoor, right? Yeah. Six seconds for them to score and you think they're going to score on you, that goal behind you gets so much bigger. Yeah, definitely. But if you come out there, and it, it can get smaller too. It's like watching a goalie. I always like watching what goalies do during like penalty shootouts mm -hmm. type of tactics, how they try to get in people's heads. Yeah. That's always like something amazing because it, it goes back to like how the whole game can just be drawn down to like the penalty kicks. Mm -hmm. Like let's say for example when Argentina and the finals had it and it's just it's big moments, you know, big moments bring out big players. Yeah. So and again it's same as I mentioned at the beginning, like confident. Hmm. A goalkeeper like let's say a game just start and then you take that shot and then the goalkeeper comes here, bah, and he catch it. Perfect catch. 
What do you say? Oh my days, they have a great goalkeeper. Yeah. But if you shoot and then you're, the goalkeeper does like this and then the no and they're see, like, oh, see, just see. keep shooting, you know, and that's already in your mind, you know. After you perform your right first save, you're like, oh, I mean, I good day. Since the warm up, you know, mm. like starting warm up with Jeremy at Macu, like before games, make sure he's catching that ball properly, he's doing the right thing because that will boost your confidence. After you boost mm. your confidence, you're right for the whole game. Mm. But if you start with the first, you sleep and it's like, it's yeah. not gonna be my day. Yeah. Now I need to figure out for 90 minutes. I hope they don't shoot at me. Uh, but it happens, man. Yeah. We've seen De Gea get scored on. I think of <laughs> when they played Portugal. Uh-huh. When Ronaldo scored oh, the second goal, he said, Fuente las piernas. In was, that, that, was that World Cup? I think that was Russia. Uh -huh, in the Russian World yeah. Cup. And and then, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, it's funny, like, in the World Cup or like playoffs, uh -huh. how like, a goalkeeper can win a game or a goalkeeper or lose can win. Yeah, because you can tie the whole game 0-0, zero, zero, go to penalty, the goalkeeper make three saves. They mm. just won the game. That kind of explains why Divo is why Divo is. Yeah. You know, you have to be <laughs> a little crazy to be a goalie too. Yeah. What other, what goalies for you are the kind of goalies that you, when you grew up, looked at? You said Iker Casillas. Iker Casillas was the biggest one. Mm. I mean, the the oh. one that I used to like a lot was... Uh, the one that used to play for Barcelona, Victor Valdez. Victor Valdez. I used to like how he used to play too. No, I wasn't that fan of Victor Valdez. I like Iker, then I started liking Ter Stegen a mm -hmm. little bit. I like Pickford a lot, but nowadays like Ederson, I believe is such... Thing. You like Pickford? Yeah, yeah. I see Pickford and I'm like, dude, that guy seems like a dick on the field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Like, I don't know, but I just like like his body language. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, it's, he's a presence. Se siente, yeah, se siente, yeah. Se Definitely, and nowadays I ever I believe, like I said, mm. it's one of the best goalkeepers. When I was growing up, the main guy was Osvaldo Sanchez. Mm -hmm. That guy used that was the guy at the house. He was, he had his way of coming out, like on a one on one, on the Sierra Cruz. Uh huh. And he would block <laughs> shots. Yeah. Yeah, that that guy, that guy was was the guy for me as well. I used to get goalie, you know, <laughs> like you said, goalies would wear whatever they'd want. Uh huh. Camisa long sleeve de la selección mexicana. <laughs> But man, I used to, I've gotten, I guess all goalies I've gotten scored on pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Yeah, we, we all have that goal that is like, oops. Yeah, I remember getting chipped from half court and me doing my best to go and catch it. And I dove back and I probably should have let it in because I got hurt. <laughs> trying to just, <laughs> just trying to do too much and then yeah. it's just like that. But there's something about just blocking everything. Blocking yeah. everything. Something about just diving. I used to, I have three brothers. I had a trampoline. Uh -huh. jugábamos en el trampolín where one brother would be on the other side the other one would be on the other and we'd have to rip it top goalie high y el portero pues would have to <laughs> just dive yeah. just dive just dive uh -huh. just dive so yeah yeah goalies man that's yeah I, used, I, I only played middle school and then after that I just stayed to the field but I always think like what would have happened if I would have stuck with it yeah but it's hard it is it's hard and then it also plays the important role of like oh how how tall are you gonna be mm. and then like <sighs> that's Another, another obstacle to face, you know. I was gonna ask. I mean, does it matter? It does matter. It does matter. Yeah, that's the that's the reality. Like, I mean, it depends what you want to play. Mm. You know, if you want to play professional, it will matter. It's mm -hmm. not the same saying a one eighty five goalkeeper besides a one seventy goalkeeper. Yeah, Jorge Campos or Van de Sar. You know, it's just yeah, two it's different things. Too much right pressures and stuff like that. So it does matter. I believe so. so that's another obstacle to yeah. face yeah that's true you ever tried to block a shot with the scorpion yeah you so tried that, that for yeah real? actually i mean no no <laughs> real 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 but like I, I like to joke about it yeah and stuff like it's just really tough <laughs> yeah have you what, what was he colombian yeah he's colombian he's Rene Guito. yeah yeah he yeah. oh, okay. was crazy amazing goalkeeper and he pulled it off great didn't he yeah you've never but tried? it's funny because on the like where he did it, it was like an offside or something like that. So yeah, no valia, no valia. Yeah, it, it wasn't like, so, but everyone believes it did, so. I mean. But I still, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have to like, tell everybody yeah, that it wasn't in a real game. Know, we'll yeah. just use that clip. <laughs> but that's yeah. a wild clip. And I had heard that he used to do that all the time. Like, yeah. it's not something that he just, just willy-nilly just tried to do. No, he was, he was great. Like, he used to go outside of the field, like, outside of the goal mm -hmm. and sort of. Like, actually, Colombia lost one of the World Cups because of that. No way. Yeah, we were playing camera. Like, with, when Colombia had this great team of Pio Rama, Faustino, mm -hmm. and all these guys. Mm -hmm. Like, I take the ball, start going outside against Cameroon. He lose the game, he lose the ball, and then they score. And Damn. We're out. <laughs> I also hear a lot about the story. What World Cup was it that they lost it in penalty kicks? Y resultó that the guy that missed the penalty ended up 
they ended oh, up killing the guy. Yeah, yeah, that's Andres Escobar. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was. I, I don't. I don't know what what year was it. It was an own goal. An own goal. Yeah, that the guy scored the own goal and they ended up killing him. That's wild, dude. Is it really wild like that? In no, the, no, no. It's anymore. just just yeah, a one time wild anymore. story, brother. Really. Yeah, and it's funny because like, actually, I had a conversation mm-hmm. recently about this. There is a new movie out there. I don't, I don't remember what is the name of the movie. It's like mm-hmm. missing something like that. Mm-hmm. It's in cinemas right now, and it's funny because it's like an American family that goes to Colombia and then they get kidnapped in Colombia. And I'm like, why? Why yeah. in the world are you doing that? Like, yeah. there is no point of it. Like, Colombia is not like that. You go on busy. Like, yeah. Yeah, I hate those kind of movies. It's kind of like the perception of people that have on Mexico. Yeah. You know? right. Don't get me wrong. Mexico is bad, mm. but one can just as easily say that. There's shootings all the time in Oklahoma City now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you yeah. can't go to That's Bricktown crazy. and I go to Bricktown. <laughs> I went to Bricktown to see Dave Chappelle and I was like, we're going to go downtown? Uh, all right, man. I've heard that a person gets shot almost every weekend <laughs> at Bricktown. Yeah. So it's kind of like, and I, and I don't like that because some of the most beautiful places in the world are in South America. Yeah. That people don't hear about. Mexico, Colombia, uh, Venezuela, all those places. Mm-hmm. Paraguay are just places that need to get visited more. And it reminds me, have you heard of the bid for the, is it the 2030 World Cup? And how it could be split up between three or four countries in South America? Mm-hmm. I don't know what countries it's going to be like, whether it's like Colombia, Chile, some other places and some other places. But yeah. I think that'd be great. That'd be a great excuse for me to go down there and visit yeah, South America. Yeah, you should. You definitely should go to South America. It's such a game changer. So where, if I were to go to Colombia, where would you recommend me to go see? <sighs> like, what are the top, like... You're going to Colombia, you have to see this. Yeah, I think, first of all, I'll tell you, go to Medellin. Medellin? I mean, it also depends on what are your plans or what kind of person you are. But, mm-hmm. like, Medellin, I believe it will combine, like, the two aspects of, like, seeing all nature stuff and also, like, the urban things. Which one is the one that's in higher altitude? Medellin or Bogotá? Bogotá, I believe Bogotá's so. up yeah. there and then Medellin 100%. is more... Yeah. Down in the coast or...? It's uh, a little bit more, yeah, more to the coast, a little bit more. Mm. So both, both is kind of in the middle, and then there, there you can go. And, and do what? Like, eat the food? Yeah, eat food, walk around, just go outside and stuff mm. like that. Then you have, like, Cartagena, where mm. you have the beach and stuff like that. That's really a tourist place as well. You have, like, all the things where the Spaniards came to conquer us and stuff mm. like that. So you have all these stories and mm. all that. And then Bogota is just the capital. Mm. I mean, really pretty. You you get good food, great great buildings, great stuff. But mm. Medellin, I think, is the most beautiful one of all. Of you ever been to Mexico? To Mexico? Yeah, yeah I, have. I have. I actually went this December. Oh, yeah, it was the first to? time. Where to? Hermosillo. Hermosillo. Never yeah. been to Hermosillo. No. Mm-mm. Okay. So no, yeah, it was it was good. It was nice. I recommend everybody to go see Mexico City. Yeah. Mexico City I is great. I, w- I really wish I need to. I need to. You got to, you got to, huh? <laughs> and then uh, for, uh, for what are, so for 2023, what are your goals and plans personally, but as well as for Goalie Masters? Well, I mean, of course, for Goalie Masters, just continue growing, mm-hmm. continue exploring, helping more people. Uh, and as a personal, just, again, continue learning, continue, like right now I'm working on my licenses, and um, all that so continue learning just continue continue learning continue learning and stick to all these about goalkeeper and loving it is that a coaching license or like a goalkeeper license just coaching so uh, there is so in order to get the goalkeeper one mm-hmm. you actually need to go through the normal licenses mm-hmm. so you need to finish all the normal ones and then you can focus on the goalkeeper really? one yeah until the B so whenever you get your B you can actually do the goalkeeper one and then there is another, I said I don't remember the names, but like there is the other association. Mm-hmm. So you have the United States one that is like the most formal that you have like the grassroots, the mm-hmm. C license, D license, whatever. And then you have another one that it actually has the goalkeeper one. Hmm. But there is not that much courses, you know. So I have the level one, but then for me to get the level two, I need to wait for somebody to actually teach it. But there is not that much demand. Because mm-hmm. again, nobody cares about goalkeepers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I always like, like, even though it seems bad, there's always like an opportunity. Like, if you see something that's not there, there's always like an opportunity to yeah. get better. Which doesn't make sense to me why you have to be a B level licensed coach to then start learning about being I a mean, goalkeeper. I, 
you need to understand the game. You do. Some, you do. Yeah, you, you do need to understand the game. And, that's yeah. true. That's true. Well, I've also seen that you're, you're rolling with people. <laughs> that um, you just recently got a new belt, uh-huh. correct? So yeah. you're into jiu-jitsu, right? Jiu-jitsu. Yes, Why jiu-jitsu? Sir. I've... It's, Jiu-jitsu to me, it's very interesting. I haven't really looked into it, but it is something that looks like... It looks fun. Just rolling and it's kind of... I'll let you explain to it because I've never <laughs> done it before in my life. Yeah. I'm only going off of what I've seen and feel. But like, why are you doing jiu-jitsu? No, and I believe you should. Like, I believe everyone should, actually. I think jiu-jitsu is a great sport. And it, changed, it changed a lot, you know, mm-hmm. like your mentality and stuff like that. So everything is... Like, when I was in Colombia, even when I was playing soccer, I was, I was like, oh, I want to... I start boxing. Like mm. I, I really wish I knew how to box or stuff like that. It looks cool, you know. <laughs> it does. It's a different kind of workout too. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, but I was like, but yeah, how I'm gonna do with soccer? You know, like mm. I'll get injured or stuff like that. And then whenever I finish like my soccer career, I was like, oh, let's try it out. So I went to a class and then I started doing Krav Maga. And then I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Like I like it. But then they told me like, oh, you should do Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu is like the best one, the best martial arts. And then I was like, okay, let's try jiu-jitsu. And I try it, I love it. And then it's like, wow, this, this is crazy. It's a different world. And what about it, though? Is it that, and that you like about it? Well, first of all, like, of course, the relationships you get. Like, mm. <laughs> rolling with people. That's what I've heard. It's like, yeah. there's no better way to get to know somebody than starting to roll with them. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? And by like, roll, for the people that don't know, is when you kind of engage into the art of jiu-jitsu you know you're basically fighting but i mean respecting the other person you know? yeah, like yeah. of course like there is so much contact between each other and stuff like that so first of all that second of all like it teach you how to learn and stuff like being disciplined like you need to show up you need to it's something new for you you need to learn mm-hmm. you know like it's not about just like oh you can't whatever just go in there yeah because if you don't know about it they're gonna break your arm or something they will, yeah, yeah they're gonna choke you uh-huh. so you need to learn you need to continue that's the other thing like it will change your mentality about like i need to be consistent with this stuff and last one i believe like it will show it will teach like first of all i mean two more aspects first of all it will give you more confidence in life just in general knowing mm-hmm. that oh i can fight you, you can know? defend yourself yeah you can defend yourself mm-hmm. and second of all it will show you a lot of Humility mm-hmm. about like this 120 pound guy can kill me in two minutes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And yeah, that's what, it's kind of like the uh, the best fighters or the people that are the most dangerous are always seem to be the most humble people. Yeah, and, they, and like if you know how to fight, you're not like on the streets trying to look for fights. Exactly. Like, it's not like you don't want to show up. You understand the art. You understand the why you should like why you time. want to fight you know yeah, like yeah, 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 what yeah. is the point of it but i mean again like if you once need to defend yourself you know that you can defend yourself mm. so that's that's an amazing and it's i really love it it has been a year since i started mm, so i was gonna ask how long you've been doing it yeah for a, year. for a year and hopefully i can continue and achieve that black belt one year nice how, what belt are you with right now right now i'm just blue, blue so blue. it works like you start with white white belt mm. it goes four degrees so you get like a stripe each degree so you go white belt degree one degree two degree three degree four then you go to blue belt Hmm. then you go blue belt one two three four then you go to purple one two three four and then you go to brown one two three four and then you go to black black five levels up yeah have you rolled with anyone out of black yeah of course now that that is crazy Uh our coach is dustin Uh oh my days he's so good like yeah I i don't think people know that like you might be small like let's say you roll with someone who just looks smaller than you yeah. even though they're a black belt they'll mm-hmm. still f- no they will f- yeah they will kill you i mean funny like this weekend this two weeks ago there was like a gym open mm-hmm. like a new gym was changing their location so they invite everyone so we as empire jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. we went there to just part of the community yeah part of support. the community show up and then i remember there was this guy one like, like 120 something like that it just destroyed me I was like oh my this is so funny. it's weird isn't it yeah and then have you ever had I think it's funny like those situations where it's just jujitsu somebody comes in and it's like Man, it's, it's not that hard and uh, then they come and get humbled yeah definitely. yeah no of course and of course like joking with my friends sometimes it's just like we start joking and I'm like okay let's do it and then I'm like okay you and know? you tie them up and you're just yeah, like yeah. and then it's also really funny because like they don't know how exhausting it is yeah like you need so much endurance and I think that's something that helps me a lot because like I have been doing sports all my life and yeah. I play soccer and all this so my endurance can, my stamina is kind of okay 
but like you start fighting with somebody one minute in you will be like breathing hard mm. and it's such a different like a scenario you know it's a different kind of battle yeah. huh? and here's the other thing why jiu-jitsu besides like i don't know kickboxing or mma or mm. something like that is two things number one like you will never get the same real experience while training in kickboxing that's as true. you do like in jiu-jitsu because jiu in jiu-jitsu honestly that's what's happening you know like in the moment you are going all in but you're mm -hmm. respecting the person but still like you're putting all the strength mm -hmm. and all this you're working hard in kickboxing you're not gonna hit your partner mm -hmm. really hard mm -hmm. or stuff like that so that's the first one and second one because like in a fight if it happens to occur a fight on the streets like if you square up to fight somebody still the other person can run you know mm -hmm. and then you can be lucky enough to connect a, he can be yeah. lucky enough you, like you can be a great boxer but you can still be lucky enough to just connect a punch or something mm -hmm. like that he besides jujitsu like if somebody falls in the ground or he grabs you it's a jiu then yeah, yeah, yeah you're not gonna choke a person because of luck you know but you actually like, need to know what you're doing it's like 80 percent oh, i'd say more like a lot of the fights that you see on the streets end up on the ground anyways That's you know the, what yeah I mean? because people tend to just grab and then they end up falling or stuff like that and again if you have the knowledge you'll know what to do so mm -hmm. I, I really 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 recommend you to go where uh, is it at the, uh, I don't, I'm not good with address, but it's in more. In more? Okay. Yeah, it's like 10 minutes from the street from Maki. So Maki to the right, all the way there. Oh, okay. It's like near the Dollar General, the Bronze. And near the highway? Yeah, near the highway. Okay, yeah, 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 so yeah, you exactly. can see it when you drive by. Yeah, I Kinda, think I've seen it. Yeah, it, but yeah, you should, you should come. I'm down. Yeah, they I'm have scared really to get tied up, but it's part of the process. No, just right? come and then we can find <laughs> out. Yeah. No, just come, we'll tie you up. <laughs> you have to, you have to be willing to get beat up, you have to get willing to yeah. tie tied up too. No, I'm there. not with, that's the thing, like, first week, it was a pain. Like, really? of course, like, <laughs> I used to cramp, is that right word? Sí, sí, yeah, sí. I used to cramp. Uh -huh. yeah, every, like, after, after class, I was Just your legs? Or? Be, yeah, my legs. That was bad. All, like, and because I'm not used to the mats, Mm. also my feet were burning like it was hurting and then all, you're down you're squatting it's low position so all these awesome. like you're sore you're stretching like people are beating mm. you up and it's like oh my days what am i doing this but then like you start getting that boom 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 that momentum mm. and then like four months in you start understanding more and then i mean i'm not saying i'm good at it of course no, there's no. so much yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> but at least you have an idea and then you can survive a little bit more it's kind of like wrestling but if you were to wrestle and get into jujitsu it'd be a lot harder if you were into jujitsu and started wrestling does that make sense mm, probably yeah i think it's easier if you're in wrestling you like there is a lot of wrestlers that go to jujitsu jiu but still they get their lesson of like this is no wrestling <laughs> yeah no no you know? like of course they have the basics of, like the takedowns and stuff like that but then a white belt will choke you out you know choke you up you want me to go get choked <laughs> no i'm kidding no it's, it's a good bonding no, i'm yeah, telling yeah. you no no yeah if you want to get to know somebody roll with them that's funny yeah. that's funny it is up there on the list of things to do and i think that's i would want to do the boxing for the workout mm -hmm. but not for the fighting yeah that's yeah. the thing so again like i do both i do jujitsu and sometimes i stay for a muay thai mm -hmm. and stuff like that but then i'm like oh yeah i'm, I'm not that much into, into it's muay. different isn't it yeah and, the scenario is such a different, like, I told you, like if you're gonna fight with somebody so hard, like, to punch or like receive the impact, nah, it's like nah, really nah, scary. Nah, I'm nah. like, I get punched once in the face, my nose, <laughs> and my eyes start tearing up. I don't, I don't think I've been into hardly any fights in my life. Maybe uh -huh. once, one time I got in a fight in Mexico when I was a little kid, but I'm not a fighter. Yeah. Nah. No, and then I'm like, dude, I cannot afford going to a doctor because I've broken nose no, or something like that. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Losing teeth? Like, nah, nah. <laughs> no, I'm, thank you. Rolling sounds a little bit more better because, like you said, you're not punching, you're not kicking. Yeah. It's more so just, you know, it's almost like a dance. Yeah, and then you get, yeah, that's the thing. And then you get to tap or stuff like that. Mm. But, yeah. So that's what you do to get your mind off of soccer then? It's the uh, jiu-jitsu and then the Muay Thai that you do a little bit. But like, what else? Is that is that what you do to keep your mind off of soccer? Because mm -hmm. soccer is life, but at the same time, we have to distract ourselves from it yeah. a little bit. I mean, honestly, I keep my daily, my, like, my life really busy. I, yeah. I like to go to the gym as well, like a lot every morning to the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, reading, that's something that I really enjoy a lot. Reading and just, yeah, jiu-jitsu and kickboxing, basically. I always like to ask people what kind of books, what's your favorite books? What, what book 
have you read that kind of really left an impact on you? Uh, my favorite one right now is David Goggins, Can't Hurt Us, Can't Hurt Me, or Can't Hurt Us. I just I'm got the second one. I'm really? You got the second one? I'm really excited to start okay. reading it. I want, I, want, I want to get it, but it was too expensive, but like, I'm going to wait a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Because I normally buy them on thrift store. Mm -hmm. They're like really cheap over there. Mm -hmm. and then you need I to get a library them. card, man. Huh? You need to get a library card. Yeah, yeah. true. So you can just get it for free <laughs> and then just turn it back in. Right. Have you finished the first David Goggins book? Yeah, of course. No, great, great, great. And his story is amazing. Mm. So basically, books that I enjoy reading the most were like self-help self-help self-improvement self but then I arrived to a moment where like I have read so many of these that all of them are kind same. of saying the yes. same thing and, and then if like, you're not doing anything yeah. like what's the point you, yeah because it feels good to read and to be like yeah I'm reading but if you're not doing anything about it then mm -hmm. what's the point no but I, I do like the, and like most of the podcasts that I listen to they're the same thing mm -hmm. so they're all combi co combining but those are the kind of books that I like a lot and right now, 2023, now I mentioned one of my other biggest goals, like grow my economy. I don't know how to say it. Like mm -hmm. My money wise, oh, money see, see, intelligence, see, see. like get, get in, get financial, yeah, financial, financial intelligence, I guess. Yeah, financial intelligence. So I'm reading like finances books right now. I'm, so I'm reading one about sellings. Mm. The one that I read was the millionaire next door. Mm. So that that's like one of my goals for 2023. How crazy is it to read about how one person thinks about money compared to another? Right? I always like to think about that because it's my parents, they don't invest. Yeah. Right? So when I started reading like Rich Dad, Poor Dad and uh -huh. how one dad thinks about money compared to the other, it's so true. Like yeah. I try to, whenever I started investing a little bit, when I got my Robinhood app, you know, just to yeah. dabble a little bit, I started telling them like, Hey, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Or whenever they wanted to do something else and they owned a house, I said, Hey, you can take money out of the house you own yeah. and use it that way. But for some people, whether it's because they're so old or they just aren't open to it, they just, they don't see it. You know what yeah. I mean? So I always, it's the financial side of it. Yeah. That's really important for people to learn about and starting to build your own empire and then whenever you have kids you know what are you going to pass on you know yeah. you, don't, you don't have kids but the second you start having kids it's like what i see like yeah now, now you need to do yeah. now and now i have to grind now i have to figure out how i'm going to leave my kids better off than when i had them so it's just yeah financial side that's one thing that i definitely 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 need to work on yeah and there is so many misbelief regarding financial, mm. a lot of things in the world. Actually, one, like, I really want to recommend your book. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I, and I don't know if you have read it or heard about it. Outriding the Devil by Napoleon Hill, I believe so. Outriding the Devil? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. Huh. So the book is about, like, this interview of him with the devil. Mm. Um, oh. It's crazy. So I, I, won't, I won't say that much, so I don't spoil you. Mm. But it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. how society thinks, how we have like all these mis misconceptions, mm -hmm. miscommunication, and all the yeah, amazing, amazing book. They have the audio book. I can send it to you. Yeah, send it to me. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I asked for some recommendations on book because my Audible account. I need to cancel it. I'm tired of getting. <laughs> pay. I, just the other day, I was like, they charge me. I'm not yeah. even buying books. So when I went to cancel it, they said, Hey, if you cancel now, you're gonna lose your 11 credits. Okay. I was like, ah, well, let me start buying books then. Okay. And that's when I got the other David Goggins book. And now I'm, yeah. I have four more credits. So Did you read the first one from David Goggins? I read it. I, I read it. I heard it first and then read it second. Okay. And hearing it was very uh, different from reading it because David Goggins is in the audio book about it. Mm -hmm. So somebody reads it and then after each chapter, him and the person that reads it kind of go back and forth <sighs> about crazy. why he was doing that, why um, he ended up just quitting spraying for cockroaches one day and then yeah. decided to go into what he did and dude that that guy his mentality is amazing he made That's me crazy. run a marathon no, honestly are you have you run the marathon i've done it twice oh. and it was terrible yeah. both times really are, are you terrible. gonna do it this year i think i'm gonna go to the half no go year. go for the whole marathon why right now because i'm doing the whole marathon you're doing the whole marathon and i need people to show have up you not me. done the whole marathon before no never in my life are you training no <laughs> oh, i will start training one day yeah sure. well, i mean it makes me feel better knowing that you haven't trained so uh, that if i sign up with you we'll both be please. equally as screwed <laughs> <laughs> but, we can walk from mile 13 don't worry <laughs> something about um something just about that though like he made me run that and it's just it was so hard for me to train for the marathon 
but you might understand this. The day that I signed up for it, I did not miss a day of practice afterwards. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I signed up like three or months, three or four months after. As de cuenta, like if I were to sign up today. I know. Uh-huh. And you bought your ticket to run the marathon already? Yeah, I already did. I did it like last year. Why? <laughs> I don't know. One day I woke up, I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Say that you run a marathon. You By know? yourself? Yeah. Yes, like... I, I keep inviting people though. So you should sign up. <laughs> I might, dude. Yeah, go for it. Because uh, no, honestly, and that book is really powerful. Like, I believe, like, the moment I reached my peak regarding, like, physical activity and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it was... Because of that book. It was written in that book. Like, I was like, dude, no excuse. Go show There's up. There's no run, excuses. Run, run. Go, 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 go. Dude, you already did this. Stop, mm. continue. You know, like, wow. Yeah, and it's like, the one thing that I liked about it when I signed up for the marathon, mm-hmm. and whenever I would try to tell people, hey, you know, sign up for the marathon... They look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. Like it's impossible. Yeah. Like it's something that nobody can do. Like you're going to go run a marathon. You're, you're stupid. Like why? It's, uh. There's no reason to. And that almost motivated me because I wanted to be like, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you. That's the thing. And I'll show you. Some, Alex. Alex the Brazilian. Mm-hmm. Like he did the, Bampa, the yeah. triathlon. The I want to have him on. Brother, what is that? Oh, I want to have go, him on. The good. day that I saw him run it, yeah. I sent a message. I was like, dude, I have to have you on the podcast because... Because. I know. I was like, because. dude, you just take it to another level. Like, you think about it. Like, you start running 13 miles and you're like, I'm so tired of 13 miles. Now imagine running 26 miles. After you're done with 26 miles, you actually need to, sw- I mean, I swim. think the swimming goes first. Yeah, no, the swimming goes first. But like, just the mentality of like, so much yeah. that you need to do. That's crazy. And he did it. And I'm like, bro. Hats I mean, off. Yeah. My props Definitely. You. you just, yeah. But something about doing something that seems impossible gets me so excited so much satisfying whenever you're done whenever you're like i did it wow yeah it's it's crazy so when i ran my first marathon uh-huh. it was fine I, I ran it with a friend who actually signed up with me and he had less time training but he did a lot better <laughs> he was like joe killed it but i hit a wall around like mile 18 <laughs> where i was like running one walk running jogging a block walking a block uh-huh. the second time i did it was worse yeah i started walking mile 18 and finished it walking okay and i did like almost six hours yeah. it took me to complete <sighs> but like goggin said like when you think you're tired when you think you're done and you think you can't go anymore you're only at 40 yeah, percent of what bro. you can do the cookie jar bro. the cookie jar yeah go for that cookie go for the cookie jar but it's like it goes to show you that, and I love when he says that you have to show your body, no, your brain, that you are the master of it. Yeah, you're in control of it. Because your brain's going to be like, I can't. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. But you're just like, he said it. I, I've been listening to the podcast because he's promoting his new book. And it's just like, can I take one more step? Uh-huh. Yes. Take yeah. it. Do it. Don't ask yourself if you can take two steps. No, no. Take one step and then ask yourself again, can I take another step? Can I take another step? I, same as we have been talking the oh, whole podcast. Take dude, a step take and then continue. Step. And you continue and continue. That's it. That's life. Stay dis- disciplined and continue showing up. That's it. Stuff like that. I love watching stuff like that. I'll yeah. get on YouTube and watch like documentaries about people that run 100 miles races. <laughs> That's crazy. Imagine. And I'm just like, dude. And I, I promise you, I'm going to do it one day. <laughs> do something crazy like that because it's... And I, not to do it to motivate others, but for yourself, but at the for same yourself. time, keeping in mind that like, if I run a marathon and my son or daughter sees me run a marathon, yeah. it's possible. Mm-hmm. It's possible. I hate people that say that's impossible. You yeah. can't do that. And then I tried explaining it to him like, yo, when I ran the marathon, I ran next to a pregnant lady. Yeah. There was a guy that ran it barefoot. There was a guy that did it in a full firefighter outfit. Mm-hmm. What's the difference from him and you? It's just you thinking Mentality. that you can't. Yeah. That's it. That's the famous quote of like, if you believe you can, or you believe you can't, both you can't. of them, you're... If you think no. you can't, you can't. Yeah. If you think you can't, you In can. both scenarios, you're right. If you believe you can do it, you will do it. If you believe you can't, then you won't do it. Oh, That's God. it. Easy. I, yeah, I try to tell my son every day before he goes to sleep. Yeah, papi, te quiero. Mm-hmm. You can do anything. Yeah. When you grow up, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to be, but you just have to believe. Yeah. He's like, okay, good night. And I was like, uh, you <laughs> okay, know? thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> Thank whatever. You. But it's so true. Like, it's just, I, yeah, you know, it's, you read these books and you're just like, well, pff, how can I teach that to my kids? Having kids is just, it's different. Yeah, but so, I'm, I'm, I don't have kids, but I'm assuming, as, 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 mm-hmm. as an example, mm-hmm. I'll be able 
So what is your favorite book? Then? Man, I have... David Goggins is up there. Okay. I really like uh, Robert Greene. He has the 48 Laws of Power. That one was really, really good too. Mm -hmm. It has lessons in life. It's kind of like power. Everyone in life seeks power. Whether yeah. you notice it or not, if you're at a workplace, whether you're at a soccer training, all these lessons um, are very beneficial. One that stuck out to me the most was like the first one. It's uh, never outshine your master. Yeah. That one is part because if you, and it kind of goes into like, if you outshine your master, then he kind of starts resenting you. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to be like under the table, never outshine your master. There's another law in there that says, um, and I like this one too, and I practice it, is never show people how difficult the things you do are. Yeah. I could be up here and say, like, man, recording a podcast is tough. Yeah. I have to come, I have to bring my bags, I have to set it up by myself, I have mm -hmm. to take it down by myself, I have to edit it by myself put it out, market it all by myself. Yeah. And I can complain about how hard that is. Yeah. But there is power in making it seem easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so then no, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh. And another one is like how um, become kind of like indispensable to somebody. So if you have a manager or a boss and you want to gain a little bit of power, you start taking these little tasks and you start doing it and it gets to a point where you're just like, we really need Juan yeah. because he does all these things and without him we need him that mm -hmm. gives you power yeah. there's so many little lessons like that and then it'll give you the lesson and then it'll give you like a history lesson on why that example has oh, worked good. for you it's really cool. really powerful it's digestible yeah. you can literally open up the book and say number 47 really? bam it'll give you the law in five pages after that have you have you read the 12 laws of life from jordan peterson mm -mm. it's kind of the same concept jordan, jordan peterson yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I like that one. The other one is, um, what's the other one? It's the four agreements, the five agreements, the four agreements. And it talks about these people and how they have four agreements that they use in life. One of them was be impeccable with your words. Mm -hmm. In other words, your words matter. Yeah. Your words are like a sword. Yeah. You can build people up with your words or you can tear them down. Yeah. Like your words make your thoughts reality. <laughs> like you can think something, yeah. but like... It doesn't matter until it comes out of my mouth. Yep. So, and then that turns it into reality. So that's one. Be impeccable with your word. The other one was always do your best. Okay. Mm -hmm. Always do your best no matter what. Pretty self-explanatory. Another one was, what was the other one? Never take anything personal because it's never about you. It's always about them. Yeah. So if I was to come and just be a bad host, treat you like shit, not let you talk, that's not necessarily something that you did wrong. There's something mm -hmm. wrong with me. There's something wrong, yeah. And you could just be like, well, damn, maybe I'm not good enough. Or, or whether, like, my wife comes home and she has a bad day and I can be like, ah, she doesn't love me no more. Whatever it might be, yeah. you start putting it on you. But then if you think to yourself, don't take this personal. This is on them, not you. It kind of just, everything bad that happens to you, don't take it personal. It's, it just it makes it a lot easier, you know? Yeah. And I forgot what the other one is, but that one is really good, too. There's a, a lot of them are self-help books, but those are like a few of the ones that I like to mm -hmm. go back to. Yeah. Do you have like a person that you also look for or something? A person like that... Like a mentor or something or not really? A mentor? I wish. I want to say that I do, but the first one that come to mind are like, I have an uncle, okay. my grandpa. Um, the reason I say my uncle is because I used to work construction and my uncle was always very much the type that would do things himself. Yeah, he didn't like getting help and I was always wondering like why wow, he's just so stubborn but further on I ended up realizing that when you grow up and you have kids or like you you're, you're, you're by yourself Yeah, and if you can't depend on yourself then who are you going to depend on Yeah, and that's one thing that I took from my Tio Paco and my Tio Nabor and all those guys it's like at the end of the day like being a man is being self-sufficient being yeah. able to take care of yourself and take care of the people that are around you um, but I need more mentors. Yeah, <laughs> I need fun. more mentors. I mean, I mean, I say like, of course, like having a one-on-one -on -one mentor, like an actual physical person here mm -hmm. is kind of tough. But like, I don't know, like people that you listen in podcasts, people like that. And it's funny because now that you mentioned, like for example, I don't know, do you know Joko Wilkins? Wilkins? Jocko, the 4am guy? Of course, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Joko, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, like extreme ownership in your life. Mm. Like you mentioned about your uncle. Like extreme ownership, everything that you do in life is because of you. It's because of you. And you create your own, you create your own poem. Mm -hmm. You're the one that writes your own poem. That's so. one of the things that grinds my gears or is people that just don't 
take ownership the ownership of what they do and it's always somebody else's fault yeah i hate that with such a passion i know and i try to tell my son that too it like, <laughs> it's your fault yeah that's your fault Baba. that's you did something wrong even though it's your fault you yeah. have to and he says that it's my fault i'm sorry and but that's good because if you don't take ownership then everything is always everyone else's fault and i guess you're perfect no yeah. that's not the case if you go to school and the teacher doesn't like you and the teacher treating you wrong well the teacher might have a bad day but at the same time what could you be doing better? Yeah. What did you do wrong? I love that. Take accountability, ownership, because that's the only thing you have control over is what mm -hmm. you do and what you think. Yeah. Like you said, then you have the power to Change fix it. this, mm -hmm. you know, because it's your actions, it's your life, it's your, it's what it builds you. Yeah. So that's, that's crazy. True. Yeah. That's those true. guys, those guys are crazy. Really good. I guess those are my mentors. <laughs> I don't know, but I do need somebody to kind of kind of look at i like to see a lot of people that are doing these kind of podcasts though too okay i admire people that are creating on their own that don't need to be i kind of i like that you know it's kind of like the podcast i don't get paid to do this i don't get uh i haven't made a dime off of this if anything yeah. i've spent more money but um <laughs> but it fulfills you it fulfills right. me it does i haven't recorded i've probably recorded three episodes since like december 30th 20th mm -hmm. and i feel like i was missing something so bad yeah. it's hard for me to explain what it's like to sit across somebody that i don't know and just bounce ideas off of each other bounce ideas off of each other and it's just that has allowed me to learn build some connections and and i think it's provided a space for other people to learn too you know what i mean yeah. so i definitely whenever you do the things that you love the other things start mm. adding gap it's crazy and what do they say it's like do if you do something that you love, if you do something that you have a passion for, then it's not a job. Yeah, definitely. you're willing to work overtime. You're willing to stay up late to edit, and it's and you're passionate about it. And every day for you is a mm. beautiful opportunity. And that's goalkeeper masters for you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that's the goal. Yeah. And podcasting too, maybe. Podcasting and all that. Something I want to get in now that you mentioned. I know you're part of it, real real estate. Yeah. Trying to learn. I mean. I want to start getting my license and how mm -hmm. that works. So. Yeah, well, my aunt and uncle here, they're <laughs> one of the best in the city. Honestly, yeah. my aunt has been doing it. Well, my, they both have been doing it forever. And then they were able to get this place. And, and it's, I think, undervalued with the, it's kind of like assets and liabilities and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And yeah, it's, do you own a house yet right now? Or nah, no, 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 just renting or whatever it might be? I still on the yeah, mm -hmm. dorms. I remember when I used to live at the dorms, some guy used to be like, oh, I can't wait till I get a house and I'm going to have all the soccer guys live in it and, and all that stuff. And like the, whenever I finally bought my house, the, one, the first thing that came to mind was like, I should have done this a lot sooner. You should? Should have done it a uh -huh. lot sooner. Why? Should have. Because one, it was always cheaper. It was always cheaper oh, back okay. in the day. Yeah, no, definitely. But you could always house hack. Like I told my brother, I was like, dude, get yourself a three bedroom house. Right get two there. of your roommates to live in them and have them pay for half of it. Yeah, that's crazy. Or my little, my youngest brother, he ended up getting a duplex. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a house that has two houses in it. And he ended up going to live with his parents and renting out those two places. Yeah. So it's, it's just the other financial side of it too. No, and that's the thing that we speak about, like having the financial mentality mm -hmm. and like looking out for opportunities and stuff like that. Because it gets hard. It gets hard. Right now I'm in the process of trying to, you know, figure out if I can do something bigger with the, what I have as far as like a house, get another house, keep the house that I have, sell it. Yeah. And it's always, it comes with risk. It comes with, you know, the uncertainty of can you do it? Can you not? But I always think like if you take something on, like you'll level yourself up to it. Mm -hmm. Like if you sign yourself up for a marathon, you will either make it or not. But it's kind of like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if you're trying to go to the moon and you can't make it, you're still in the stars. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? You will learn a lot of trip mm -hmm. And again, like they say, there is always good thing, but uh -huh. like whatever it takes, you it will always be something good. Something <sighs> that you learn, something that you experience. I'm, so, I'm, like, I'm upset now because I think it might sign up for the marathon now. I <laughs> got it. Yeah. I already told you. So now it's going to be Yeah, you, it's, now it's, it's going to be, be like, stuck. one is going to think I'm weak because I didn't sign up, so I'm going to sign up now. It's not that. It's just that like... <laughs> I've always said that, like, if I don't sign up for the marathon, the day the marathon comes, I'm going to regret it. Yeah. And the only reason I said half marathon is because 12 miles, Easy. that's doable with a little bit of training. Yeah. Honestly, like 12 miles, uh, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Pero a la vez, it's not that much. 
Yeah. 26.2 is double that. Yeah. Double that. I remember when I was running the marathon and you get to a point because you start downtown and then you end up like at Bishop McGinnis uh-huh. and it's like half marathon, take a left. To the city. <laughs> Full marathon. Keep going to Lake Hefner. And oh, my. Like, ah. Yeah. But, dude, it sucks. All <laughs> the way up to you see the finish line. Yeah. And then you see the finish line and you Nah, man, it. you start sprinting. I come back. <sighs> man. It's, there's nothing. And then you sit down with a broken body and you're just like, okay, like David Goggins says. Yeah. I did this shit. Yeah. I did this to myself. And then go, I need sushi, right? And then, yeah. And then but it's, life is good. It changes your mentality. Mm-hmm. I ran a marathon. I've done two marathons. So why the hell can I not go outside and run three miles today? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's it's it, just... Yeah. You have done it before. Why you cannot do it? This is just... Excuse Keep going. Like, you, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. It's beautiful. Have you been out there to see them start running it? Have you seen them run it? Have you... No, no. I mean, the closest that I got to, actually, because I hate running. <laughs> That's yeah, why I'm a goalkeeper. Yeah. I started running, actually, Danny Fried, like, he has this game ritual about running every game, hmm. like, a long period. So really? I started running, and then I started running, and then I was like, oh, I did three miles. Okay, can we do four? Yeah. And then with four, then I was like, okay, I did eight. Can I do nine? Oh, that's a dangerous and game then to I'm play. Like, then I'm, I'm, I can do 10, right? And then I'm like, I can go for the half marathon. And then you run 13, and then you're like, you can do more, you know? Yeah. But the, so, yeah. I, I end up, like, the biggest run I have done is just 13 miles. 13 miles. Yeah, just a half marathon by myself. Just, just right around now. the Hefner. That's it. But the, then I'm like, let's, let's do the, the full marathon. Let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. I remember one time, our mutual friend, Franco, Oh, Frank, yeah. He left, came back, ran 10 miles around Lake Hefner, and he said, I challenge you, Ricardo. And I had not ran 10 miles. This was in <laughs> preparation for my first marathon. Yeah. And I said, fuck it, let's go. And I did the 10 miles that day, and I was like, ah, si se puede. But it's like that dangerous game of like, you run three miles, and you're tired. And you're just like, well, the fourth mile is just one mile away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm already here. Yeah. I've already accomplished my goal. I could stop now, or I can just take one more step. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, I mean, actually, there's, like, a lot of studies about, like, how people end up quitting or stuff like that. It's because they have the mentality of, like, oh, I'm going to do this huge thing, besides mm-hmm. thinking, I don't need to add one mile so I can continue. Yes. So, like, I'm not running 26 miles now in my life, but then you're like, okay, I just need one more mile. Okay, you're in mile five. Okay, I just need one more mile. I'm in mile six. six. Okay, one more lap. Let's go. Seven, boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. And then you start building up, and then you're like, Mile 20, dude, I just did 20 miles, let's do six more. Yeah. Man, life is good, you know, continue. When, when I had my friend Joe on the first mile, that's we, we were together up to mile 16 and then he left me. But I was like, <laughs> we're not running 26 miles once. Uh-huh. We are running one mile 26 time. times. And then, you have, yeah, and then you have your mentality of like, oh, 0.70, I only need 0.3 more. And uh-huh. I finish my mile. And then I would always tell him like, hey, the marathon does not start and mile one the marathon starts when we want to quit the second we don't want to take another step hey the marathon starts yeah. now and we'd run mile eight number eight has the marathon started yet for you no not yet all right let's go it hasn't started yet but once mile 16 hits man that's when it's just painful painful <laughs> painful my, the second time i was just drinking too much water yeah i was puking it up it was really? terrible that's terrible crazy. terrible we'll but see how it goes. tengo la meta de, to beat my pr which is like five hours and 20 minutes i mean the other thing like i'm, I'm not really rushing about like this just time, completing you know? i just want to complete it that's complete good moment i have it's funny because i saved some podcasts uh-huh. joe rogan podcasts that i really want to hear i have them saved i haven't listened to them they take like two hours uh-huh. so i'm like okay i'm gonna start with my podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. and see how it goes i love his interviews with goggins that's when i yeah. first ran into goggins was on the joe rogan okay. podcast and uh-huh. that guy that guy's the guy, man. That yeah. guy's the guy. All of them. I, all of them, I believe. They have such a good society. It's crazy. So then after the marathon, you'll eventually do a triathlon? or? Probably. I, I, I like swimming a lot. I'm not yeah. that big into bike, especially here. It's so annoying like with the wind and everything like that. But I really like swimming. I, I go to YMCA. Mm-hmm. I normally swim for long periods as well. So of the three, you think swimming would be the easiest for you? Mm, yeah I think it will be the one that I will enjoy the most mm-hmm. but also I think like running I mean the worst that can happen in running you start walking so I don't know you have to yeah you have to I 
from what I have seen, it's people that take breaks. They'll run a mile, take walk half a mile, run yeah. another mile, half a mile. As opposed to when I ran it, I was just like, I'm just going to go. And then I hit mile like 13, 12, and I was like, ah, all right, I'll take a little break. Yeah. And then I'll run a little bit more, and my breaks start coming a little bit more frequent until it's like a break the whole time. Yeah. So it's just being smart about it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. And then here's the other issue that I face is like, uh, I don't want to stop practicing jujitsu because I mm. want to do the marathon, and I don't really have that much time, you know? So I'm like, you gotta make time. Yeah. You gotta make time. <laughs> That's true. You gotta make time. Well, dude, Juan, we've been on for an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? It was great. It was great. Yeah, we can go more time. Like now, nah, we could. But I know, I know, no, what I said. Like we can talk so much things to talk about. One seventeen. Uh, my shift starts at twelve. I gotta go up to the north side to my suegra's house where my daughter is. Oh really? Yeah. It's the only time I can find to record on a weekdays is before twelve. Yeah. Okay. But I've been wanting to record like on a Friday afternoon. Like I told you. Like, yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna do soon. I'm gonna send out an invitation and say, hey, first three people to respond. Let's sit here with a few beers and, and just talk <laughs> just about life. Yeah, just having more people. Like one, two, three, four, five. You have five chairs. Estaría padre, no? Yeah. Just get a lot of people talking here. Talk talking about, about life, nice. soccer. Boom. That would be amazing. That would be a hit, huh? It's, it always surprises me, the people that tune into the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's sometimes... And it's like with anything. You get more support from the people that you don't know than the people that are closest to you yeah which is weird it's crazy but i guess that just goes to show you that if you like something and are passionate about something to stick with it because you'll eventually find your own community i guess mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah so true. you should stick to the podcast bro yeah we'll we'll, we'll continue growing a little hopefully <laughs> it'll be nice all right do you have any questions for me not really no mm. cool yeah. i i think i got everything that i needed from you for now <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a lot of topics to continue yeah, and yeah hopefully we we get to talk again after april when we complete after the april 30th hey how was your 20th mile <laughs> yeah yeah no it'll be good we're gonna i guess we're gonna run the marathon yeah so the good thing is that whenever we finish this presentation you're gonna go to internet and sign up for the marathon after yeah this. it's like 120 but it's just man 130 32 i think 30 right now expensive yeah, yeah. It's exciting though. I'm excited for you getting to see it the first time. Yeah, we'll see. Because you're gonna, the day, two days before, you're going to have to pick up your bib. Uh -huh. You're going to have to go downtown to the convention center. And from then on, dude, it's just so much energy. You get yeah. energy from everybody. So everybody's there for the same mission. Yeah. Everybody is cheering you on. And then you get your bib, you get your clothes set out for the next day. You get your little gel packs because you've been doing research <laughs> about what's going to help you to do this marathon. Yeah. Carp up, eat uh -huh. pasta, yeah. All that stuff. You get the right shoes, you get the right shorts. You yeah. figure out you're going to put the bib like around your crotch area or your back. It doesn't matter. And then you wake up at 4 a.m. You go downtown. You park far. <laughs> rent your scooter right uh -huh. to the beginning. Uh, and then you line up with 20,000 people. Yeah. And then there's the moment of silence. And then it's like, racers, are you ready? And then everybody starts getting pumped. Pow! The first three, four miles, dude, is just, man, amazing. You don't yeah. feel it. But that's like when you have to go slow. And then just throughout the whole thing, just seeing people cheer you on, seeing people give you cups of orange juice, give yeah. you cups of beer. Oh, really? you know, there's like all these things. Everybody, it's just so beautiful. And uh -huh. I've always said that doing the Oklahoma City Marathon is like the most Oklahoma thing you could do okay because it's all everybody's there for the same thing like, yeah you can strike up a conversation with somebody and it's just everybody's there on the same mission complete the marathon complete mm -hmm. the marathon complete were, the marathon. Were, were you listening to music or were you i couldn't that's the funniest thing when i ran during training i would run with music but whenever i did the marathon i couldn't yeah. i had to hear everyone i had to hear people cheering me on okay. i had to hear the sound of my foots just pop I could not because it's such a it's such a beautiful moment. You just I wanted to be present for it. Yeah, you know definitely. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I could. Maybe I once I'm dead and I need a little bit of motivation afterwards. But I surprised myself at how I did not want to listen to anything besides just crazy, what was going cool. on in the moment. That's amazing. So, yeah. what do you do? You run with music or do you train? I normally do with podcasts, and then mm -hmm. sometimes if I like, I actually need like that extra boost. I put some Shakira in. Mm -hmm. Some and Shakira. And Shakira. Some hips don't lie, and then. So, I'm, yeah. Go more. She's Colombian, right? Yeah, she's Colombian. She's Colombian. But, what a moment she's going through, huh? Yeah. 
<laughs> but I see what you're saying, and that will be yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's that's one of those things that I didn't know was gonna happen. And then it's like when you hit mile 18, you don't mm-hmm. know how you're gonna react. Yeah. It's definitely like a lot of teaching. It taught me a lot about myself, and then you know it also taught me that you can do anything. So yeah. just, just keep it up. Just keep doing it. Take one step after another. Just keep going. Just keep going. We'll see how it goes. It's gonna go good. It yeah. might be terrible but if you complete it when you complete it okay. it'll be tight it'll yeah. be nice excited about it yeah yeah we'll see I'm surprised like how you wanted to sign up and just just just, just pull the trigger on it crazy things just like you need to mm. just show up sign up and then you're there <laughs> like Nike just do it huh yeah just do it this is you're there you have to get a special shirt for what that has uh, goalkeeper masters uh huh and put it on the back yeah. I created my when the first time me and my friend did our own we made our own shirt i bought an orange shirt i put the football factory logo on it yeah and then on the back i put hashtag show me uh-huh. i don't know we decided to put hashtag show me because you might talk about going to do the marathon but hashtag show me yeah do it do it do it actions will tell you i almost wanted to get something tatted on my legs mm-hmm. that said like don't stop yeah or like keep going so that whenever I got tired and put my hands on my legs, I'd see that sign that says, Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah. Keep going. Like, it's crazy how you just find little things to try to motivate you. But yeah. Yeah. Deep. I'm excited for you, dude. We'll see. And then we have another podcast. I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah no, about no. how I'm going to regret <laughs> running it. Nah. I mean, <laughs> I think you got over the hardest part. The signing Thank yourself God. up and thinking that it's possible. Because... It's just crazy how people just think it's impossible. Yeah, people just think. And then you see like this 56 year old guy running it and you're like, oh, I can do it. And then you realize that you're different from others that think it's impossible because it's just a mental thing, you know? And then you realize that everything is just mental. Yeah. <laughs> everything is just mental, <laughs> yeah. dude. Crazy. Dang, dang. Well, bro, I, I really enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, it was really An hour nice. and 42 minutes. I hope the people that are listening to it enjoyed it as much as we do, you know? podcasts are weird yeah because i like it's like it's just me and you and it might just be like 13 people that listen to it but like <laughs> i don't know i don't know hey we can impact one person we can impact the world amen yeah, right so amen. you want to leave a message for anybody in colombia we'll clip it and then just put it out on your facebook so you can say something to your friends family or whatever you can look at that camera right there see no it's cool mm, let me think about it i mean <laughs> i don't have no i mean just the message will be just Believe in yourself, stay consistent, and know that you have the power to accomplish everything that you want. I love that. That's the truth. That's the truth. Well, we'll leave it at that then, Juan. All right, perfect. All right, thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, Juan. And if you've been listening to it, like I said, I appreciate you guys. This has been another episode of the Mass Football Podcast. Peace.